I've been talking about how to launch a profitable SaaS business on this channel for a few years. So I thought maybe it's time to show you how to do it instead. So in the next 48 hours, my friends, I'm gonna come up with an idea, validate it, build it with no code and AI and launch it in the market. And the catch is that I need to be profitable before the end of this video in 48 hours. It's time to put my money where my mouth is. Let's go. Now for this startup, because I'm planning on actually running it after we launch it, I decided to take on a co-founder. This is Cole, my buddy, and we're gonna be working together on this. Let's talk about step one. As you know, every great business that makes millions of dollars today started with one thing, a great idea. So for this step, I'm simply gonna be using pen and paper, but also the help of my good old friend, ChatGPT. Okay, so first I wanna see if I can find some technology trends that I could build a startup on. So now I'm gonna take some of these trends and I'm gonna write down businesses that could be built around them. The second thing I'm gonna do is the problem-based approach, which is basically figuring out problems that I currently have and seeing if there's a solution for them. Okay, so this brainstorm took about half an hour and now I realize that I will not be able to solve the problem of my newborn crying all night. So I basically picked this other idea, which is a problem I currently have. So basically when I plan out some of these videos, I do so much research around the topics, around the people that I introduce Use, and it's also not the kind of work that I like to do. So I came up with the idea of creating an AI research assistant for podcasters so they can prepare for their next guests. Because frankly, doing all the research is so boring and I would just love to have a handful of questions I could ask guests and a full profile about this person so that I could quickly prepare before jumping on air and know everything I needed to know. I also think that if it works in the podcast world, it could also potentially work in the YouTube world. Now, before jumping into it, you don't have a full idea until you've answered these three questions. The first one is who is your customer, right? In this case, case, our customer would be a podcaster who has already started their podcast, has a small following, maybe doesn't have a huge team, right? Number two, what's the actual problem? Well, the problem is that you have to do research and that usually takes either hours or you have to pay someone hundreds of dollars to do the research for you. And the third question is, what is your business model, right? You're really only a business once you have a business model. In our case, we're actually going to give people access to this for free. And then if they want more, then they're going to have to pay a subscription. It's going to be a monthly subscription. And now that we have a complete idea, we're ready to move forward. Awesome. So that part only took us about one hour. Now, the good news is that we have an idea in the bag. The bad news is that if this doesn't have legs in the market, we're gonna have to start from scratch. And that's why it's important for us to get to step two. Here's the hard reality, my friends. It doesn't matter if I think this is a great idea. It doesn't matter if you think it's a great idea. The only thing that matters is if the market thinks it's a good idea and are actually willing to pay for it. So the next step is validation. Now for this step, I would usually line up a bunch of customer discovery interviews so I could understand what the market needs. But because I only have 48 hours, I'm gonna have to skip this and find quicker ways to validate this idea. So to speed this up, I'm actually gonna text a couple of people I know who run podcasts to understand if they even have a problem in this area. Okay, so what would you say is like the most difficult part for you to like run a podcast? One is the clipping process, so getting the right clips. Uh, second is, I think, research is a time sink. So like what kind of research? Is it about the guest? Is it about the topic? The guest like kind of leads the topic. So like just finding uh, finding information about the guests, uh, you know, if they've done other podcasts. Would you pay um, to solve that? I mean, I would. If my podcast would make more right now, I would get a researcher like on the team but it's not really feasible right now. Okay, so I think that feedback was kind of promising. We might actually be on something, but before I jump into the next step, I want to do a second method of validation, and that is research. So what I'm going to do now is go to the interwebs and see if people are talking about this problem openly, maybe on forums, maybe on blog posts, because I want to make sure there are actually more people with this problem. Research, interesting. Prepping show notes. Research, again. Okay, so with that insight, I feel pretty confident that we can build the first version and actually go out there and test it. But just to be clear, if I didn't have a 48 hour time limit, I would definitely invest more time in validating this idea. Now it's time for step three. We now wanna build out the website and the first version of the platform. But to do that, we need to actually have a brand behind it. So in this step, we're gonna be creating the branding. First up, we need to come up with a name and then we need to find if it's available as a domain. Now for this, Cole came up with a really cool idea. Joe Rogan has this guy on his podcast called Jamie. And every time he just calls up on Jamie, he gets him the research instantly. Oh, pull it up, Jamie. And that's kind of what we're trying to do with the startup. So we thought that my Jamie could be an interesting one. However, after checking out the domain availability for Jamie or my Jamie or things like that, I didn't find anything good. So we're actually gonna take a different direction. So let's get some inspiration. The first thing I'll do is go to this tool that I find pretty cool called Namelix. And we're gonna go and try to find a brand. Okay, so as usual, all my best ideas come when I'm just taking a little walk, having a break. And I thought of this concept, but basically, you know how we're trying to get people their research before the interview. We could maybe call it an outer view. So I'm gonna roll with that. I'm about to head back to the studio. 
We're gonna jump into it and take the next step. Let's go. I checked it out and there's not that many people using this name. And also I bought outerview.io on Namecheap. But what is a brand and a name without a logo? To create this logo, I could go to something as simple as logomaster.com. There's another one called luca.com. But a couple days ago, I saw that Fiverr created an AI generator and I'm gonna try to use that one. So I'm on Fiverr now. And if you go to the top bar here, you can type in logo and you come here. What's the name of your brand? outer view and you see it's just generating some and this is it my friends the logo excellent so now that i have my logo i need to create a color palette around this specific key color that i'm going to be using throughout the entire project now for this i'm going to be going to a platform called colors or coolers so after playing around for about 15 minutes here's my color palette basically i'm mainly going to be using this key green there's going to be a lighter version of that there's also going to be a kind of background version of that i have a color palette now i need some images so i'm going to go to a platform called unsplash here you can get royalty free images as you wish i'm gonna put podcasts i'm gonna find some images that work well for what i'm trying to do okay so i'm actually pretty happy with this basic brand we've just created and just to be clear avoid over perfectionism in this first step of building a brand because people don't care about your logo they care about the value of your product next step is to build a website more specifically a one-page landing page that describes your offer very specifically and makes it very enticing for people to buy so let's jump in and use the elements we've just created to go out and build that okay so to build this landing page I'm going to be using software. We'll be talking a little bit more about software in a second, but let's jump in and start building out the structure, which is really going to be our offer. So once I'm logged in, I created a new project. It's untitled application. I'm just going to delete everything and I'm going to start from complete scratch. That took a long time, but I'm done. Now let's check it out. Your podcast research done in seconds with AI. So basically here is the promise. Then it's everything that you need to crush your next guest appearance. Now here we have pricing. I'm going to make it for free for a couple of uh, searches. And then I'm going to have the pro version that people have to pay $25 a month to upgrade to. I'm going to finish it off with a call to action. Take the work out of your podcast, try a free trial. But as you can see here throughout, I have start free trial. So you want to have your call to action in different areas of your website. Landing page, check. So unfortunately that took way too long, about seven and a half hours just to build out the landing page. Cause yes, I got a little stuck in perfectionism. I wanted it to look really, really nice. And that's kind of putting me in a pickle because I only have 34 hours to actually build out the whole product, launch it, get first customers. It's scary. Okay, so now that we know the three key features that we wanna build out in this MVP, let's talk about the no code and AI tools that we're gonna actually use to build it out. Okay, so the first tool we're gonna be using is pretty much the engine behind this entire startup. And it's actually the way that we're gonna tap into AI to bring complicated features to this app. The name of this tool is Make, and it is a no code automations platform. It basically allows you to automate actions inside of like a bunch of tools that you already use. And the drag and drop interface allows you to build very simple, but also very complex scenarios. that could just connect two different apps or could connect a whole series of apps. So a simple example of this could be something like when someone fills out your contact form on your website, it could shoot the information of that potential client inside of your CRM. It could also send it inside of your email marketing tool that could start a drip campaign. So sure, we're gonna use this tool for all sorts of simple operational efficiencies to automate things. But more importantly, we're gonna use it with more complex scenarios to be able to go out there and fetch all the information from across the web, tap into AI, and pretty much run the entire backend of this startup. Now, just to be transparent, with you when I got the idea for this video I actually reached out to them to see if they would sponsor their video and guess what they accepted Yay! so thank you so much make just to be clear I'm not saying nice things because they are sponsoring this video but because this is legitimately my favorite no code automation tool anyway now that we have the engine for this startup we need to have a place to store the data and that's exactly why we're going to turn to the second tool the name of this tool is Airtable Airtable is pretty much a spreadsheet on crack that lives on the internet you can build internal tools for your company with this you can also use it as the database for any SaaS product. Now that we have the engine and we have the structure, we now need to build the beautiful finish on top, the user experience. And for this, we're gonna be using a tool called Softer. Now, like the other tools I talked about today, this is a very intuitive platform. And the reason why I chose these tools is because even if you're non-technical, you can use them. So they can be incredibly powerful. And now that we have the right tool stack, it's time to jump into building. Now, because nothing matters in your startup until you've built out the engine, let's jump into Make and we're gonna start building. Awesome, so I just talked to Cole. He's gonna jump in and start building out the Make scenarios. I'm gonna jump into Softer and build there. How about some epic music for this time-lapse? Cole, what's up, man? Hey, man, we got a bit of a problem here. What's up? So I've been trying to troubleshoot some of these API calls, and we're nearly there, but the perplexity API seems to be consistently giving us some bad responses. Do you think we can hop on a quick call? 
Yeah, let's do it. I'll shoot you a little zoom link right now and we'll try to figure this out right now. Okay, so I have some good news. After 45 minutes chatting with Cole right now, we were able to figure out what the problem was. We adapted the prompt uh, and Perplexity now is responding correctly. There's actually a funny story behind this. When we were prompting it to get past appearances, the guests had already been on like podcasts, previous podcasts, it was basically sending us back uh, that song. <laughs> And even though the song was promising us that it was never gonna let us down, uh, you know, Perplexity was definitely doing that. But anyway, we fixed the problem and we're back on track. Guys, we did it, we cracked the engine, we finally built out the scenarios, all of them work, and they're providing us with the data we need inside this app to run the engine. So now let me show you how we built it. I'm gonna be breaking down each in plain English. Okay, so this first scenario is find guest info, right? And this is what allows us to create the profile. So as soon as someone inputs the name of the person they wanna search for, it's automatically gonna go ahead and it's going to get that information inside of Airtable. So what's the name of that person? It's gonna go and tap into perplexity. It's going to do all the main research. Then it's gonna go ahead and mark it down, meaning that it's gonna create a prompt. Then we're gonna send it to ChatGPT and we're gonna be doing two different things around formatting and summarizing and then we're finally gonna be sending it back to Airtable. And once it's inside of Airtable, we're gonna be able to represent it on the front end. And all this in seconds. Now let's talk about the second one. So this scenario is going to generate personalized questions for that guest. The first thing that happens is that there is a webhook that waits a little bit because we need to get the information about the profile before we know and create the question. Then here in Airtable, it's gonna go ahead and grab those records and we're gonna send them to Perplexity to find specific questions based on that profile. And finally, we're gonna send back those personalized questions to Airtable. And this third scenario seems very simple, but it's about finding the right social media accounts for this specific individual. The first thing that we do is that we have a webhook again. It sends that information. We make a first search on perplexity. So we find that specific YouTube channel. We find that specific LinkedIn based on that person's website. And we're gonna send it to another tool that's gonna allow us to then send it back to perplexity so that we can double check that that's actually the right person. And then we're going to create that and send the link to that inside of Airtable. Again, where we're gonna be able to show it on the front end inside of the app. Now, another cool thing that we were able to do with Make is actually go out there and find all the past videos that person appeared on so that we can bring in all of those appearances and put them in a content library. So really, it provides people with everything that they need in one place to research their next guest appearance. And that, my friends, is how we built the engine, attached it to the structure, and also we're able to create a very beautiful user experience. And now that we've done all the heavy lifting, we're gonna go inside of software and we're gonna to start to fine tune the user experience to make it really user friendly. This is it, the moment of truth. Let me introduce you to Outer View. Your podcast research done in seconds with AI. So when you reach the landing page, you can pretty much use any one of these buttons here to sign up for free. And then once you do that, it's gonna ask you to log in or to create an account. Once you've logged in, you're gonna find this account, which is guest research. So we're gonna go ahead and add a record here. And we're gonna select for this example, Alex Hermosi, because a lot of you probably already know him. So now it's going out there and researching uh, everything about this guest. Boom, and just like that, in seconds, we have a full profile. So here we have a recap of the profile. We have some of the social accounts. We have some popular quotes from him. So these could be quotes that people could explain on air and clarify, and you can ask specific questions. It also provides the context and significance of these quotes. And then underneath here, we have personalized questions. Then we jump into all the details about his background, his career, his contributions, his achievements, a full timeline of the entrepreneurial journey, his current role. And finally, we jump into past appearances. So you can easily get access to content where you see him speaking, being interviewed by someone else. So you can really see what you can expect. And so within just a couple of seconds, and then just review viewing this maybe in 20 minutes, you're completely ready for your next interview. So you can click underneath in the description and test out Out of View for free. If you wanna subscribe, it'll cost you less than $3 per appearance. And so instead of spending three hours of your time or hiring someone to do it for you, for just $3 per guest, you can use this tool. What's up guys, how's it going? I won't lie, I'm feeling a little bit defeated this morning. Last night, my newborn was crying all night and I was also up late fixing some bugs in the product but we have so much more to go. So I'm super excited that we finished the product. With that being said, now we have the hard task of going out there and getting first paying customers and time is running out. So I'm gonna drink a little bit of coffee. And let's go. Last night I realized, hey, I actually also have to go and get customers and time is running really, really short. So last night what I did is that I hopped on LinkedIn and just added as many podcasters as possible. There were about 20 of those podcasters that accepted my friend request. So now today I'm gonna to try to get in touch with them and try to get them to buy. And if you wanna provide support right now, either get me a coffee or subscribe to this channel. I just received a message back from one of the people that I messaged on LinkedIn. I asked him, uh, do you have an assistant uh, who does your guest research? And he said, no. 
uh, I need one, I do the research. So I started the conversation just like, hey, I'm like building out this AI assistant, you know, like that can do it all for you. And so, hey, who knows? Potentially this person could be our first paying customer. Guys, you won't believe it. We actually did it. We got our first paying customer. Let's go. It's a guy named Matt and he bought the uh, annual plan from us, which is absolutely amazing. Matt, you are a legend. You are our first customer for Out of You. We will treat you like a prince. There's nothing like the feeling of that first sale for your startup. And in this case, it is for a podcast called Not Done Yet, the podcast for clues to success and how high performers never give up. It's a podcast where he interviews successful founders and he's gonna use Outer View to get the full profile to save him a bunch of time. Congrats, Matt, this is awesome. Now let's keep pushing so we can get as many sales as possible before the end. We have two hours left, let's go. Oops, I did it again. Got another sale, guys. <laughs> another guy, this time it's for the $29 monthly plan. Leroy Hempen, excellent. I'll go and check out his profile. We have only 20 minutes left, so I'm hoping I can get one last sale squeezed in before the end, but we're gonna see. Oh man, this is so exciting. Okay, my friend, time is up. It's time to look at the results and to see whether we've succeeded or failed. Now, unfortunately, I'm sorry to say that I failed this challenge. Let me explain. We got two paying customers, one for the $29 plan and the other one for the $300 annual plan. So that's a total of $329. Now for the cost, let's break it down. I first wanna mention that I already have access to a lot of these tools, so I didn't actually spend extra apart from the actual logo. And most of these tools have free access at the beginning, but if I had already exceeded all my free credits, this is what it would have cost. So Software would have cost me $167 on the monthly plan. For Airtable, if I went month to month, it would cost me $54. Then for Make, it would cost me $18.82, plus about $10 for access to the API for Perplexity, $20 for ChatGPT, and then I spent $90 on the logo itself. That is a grand total of $359.82, meaning that I am $30.82 short, therefore I am not profitable and I fail this challenge. However, because all of these platforms have free plans to begin with, you could also consider that I've only spent $120 for the additional tools that I use, and that means a $209 profit, which means that I would have won this challenge, potato, potato. Okay, that's it for me. Thanks for watching till the end. Let's go for a nap.